Hello everyone and welcome to Switch Up. In today's video we've got one of our addicted games videos for you. In this one we'll look at six games, free each, games that we play and enjoy and consider more-ish would you say Mark, games that you just want to keep coming back to. Yeah, super addictive games, uh, the definition of which is different for each of us, Glenn tends to look at more arcade classic type games um, and for me it can be a bit of anything. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, mine are high score chases for the most part, whereas, as, as Mark says, he uh, anything goes, to be fair. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it should be a nice mix between us. Nice one, Glenn. Yeah, do make sure that you save 10% on your eShop vouchers over at switchup.gg and save a bit of money on any of these games. So, which games have we picked then? Well, let's find out. Okay, so first up then, I've got one that was recently released. It's Fire Emblem Three Hopes. And uh, this is a Musu game, but it also tries to bring in a lot of the Fire Emblem elements. Now, I haven't played... A, this is kind of strange because I haven't played a huge amount of Fire Emblem. So my knowledge of that is from you, Glenn. Yeah, and obviously my, my knowledge of it is the more traditional games, the uh, the, the strategy games. Mm, yeah, so they've, they've tried to merge the two. Um, it does work quite well. And I think the, the reason it works is because it's optional. Right. So you can, you know, you've got your Musu battles. Um, there's an encampment area where you can go and uh, do your side quests, cook food, make relationships better, all of that mm. bump, you know, all that, all that stuff. Um, but if you wanted a traditional Musu experience, you can actually select casual mode um, and have it basically a lot more simplified, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I remember you saying to me, which actually for me, really caught my interest and is what made me want to play Fire Emblem the most. I remember you saying that there was a permanent permadeath. Yeah, so in terms of classic Fire Emblem, I, I mean, my, my first experience was a, a Game Boy Advance game. Mm -hmm. I think it was called The Sacred Stones. Nice. And it has carried on, don't get me wrong, but they've added kind of casual modes and whatnot since. But you had mm -hmm. the permadeath whereby if a character dies on the battlefield, they're, they're gone forever and the story carries on without them. Um, which was quite a quite a big thing back then, you know. It was um, I don't remember too many other games that, that did it, mm. and it was quite quite gut wrenching <laughs> at times because you could be you know ninety five percent of the way through a mission and lose a character, and you could carry on, you can complete the mission, but nine times out of ten, well, ten times out of ten in my case actually, <laughs> you, you'd just restart. You'd want to you'd want to try it again and, and finish with everyone alive, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they've basically taken that and they've put it into a Musu game. The thing for me, I don't know about you, I played a load of the Dynasty Warriors games over the years. Yeah. And yeah. It, it gets to the point where you're so invincible, um, it's basically, it's not pointless, but there's no real... Consequence. Uh, what's the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's no real consequence. You, you know, you're just on this killing spree. Other generals die, but then they'll come back to life. Like, right. it, it, there's no consequence. So having that permanent death in a game like this, which again is optional, you can play a different mode, a casual mode if you want, but having it there for me made a big difference. And there's so many characters introduced. I mean, even in the short time I've played, they're constantly introducing new characters. You do get to choose one of your three houses, obviously, uh, which one to join. Um, uh, but having having that for me has, has been a real game changer in the Musu, you know, in my experience of Musu at least. Does it have? Because the other thing that's, that Fire Emblem is uh, is known for mm -hmm. is the fact that you can enhance or increase your relationship to such a point with certain characters that they might then have an offspring and they'll inherit oh. some of the skills of, of their parents. Is that anything that's in this game that you've seen so far or does it hint towards it? There's relationship building, but I don't right. know where it goes yet. So I'm not that far in yet. to know where, you know, the outcome, <laughs> quite literal outcomes of those are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of keen to find out. I am aware that they're constantly adding in. It's one of those games where I think you can play for a very long time and they're still adding new mechanics. Yeah. So I will have to give this, if, if it's going to get like a review treatment or something like that, it's going to need a lot more time. Yeah, yeah. No, it sounds good. I, I was intrigued by that one because I do like the Warriors games as a whole, but um, whenever they've done a spin-off one, like the uh, obviously the, the Fire Emblem ones or, or the, the Zelda ones, Mm. As much as I like them, it's the his historical aspect that's always intrigued me about the Warriors game. So I wasn't right. quite sure whether they'd keep my interest. But I do like the fact you've mentioned it's got, you know, the permadeath in there and what have you. Right, my first game then, again, and this kind of says what, or, or hints towards what we said at the start, very different to your first pick, is Bit Trip 
Runner, mm-hmm. which is um, without being an actual arcade game back in the days, as arcadey as you can get, really. <laughs> and it's uh, it's an auto auto runner, as the title would imply, with a, a very simplistic art style, all done uh, in a, a retro kind of uh, I was going to say eight bit, probably about four bit style to be <laughs> fair, but a, a very much an intentional one that looks classy still to this day. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a modern retro game. That's mm. what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> Very smooth, isn't it? Very smooth, yeah. Lovely use of colours. Very, very bold, very clean colours. Mm. Um, and also, the other big part of it, of course, is is the music. Um, huge, very integral part to the gameplay. And the point of it is obviously to get through each stage, as, as you do on a, on a, a runner. But you have a few different moves. You have a jump. You can uh, duck under objects as they fly towards you. You can deflect them back from where they came. As you go on, you, you learn a few new moves. And there are springboards and things like that. And each time you hit or use one of these moves, it kind of adds a beat to the music. Oh, that's cool. And of course, because it's all done, it's almost like clockwork. You know, the enemies, everything's done to the beat of the music. So your reactions will will enhance that music score. And then there are power-ups or or collectibles more so than power-ups, sorry, that you'll find that will add a new layer to the music. And by the end of the stage, you've got this lovely (laughs) chiptune rendition playing. For me, you know, obviously this is a, a video about games you find addictive. Mm. This came out, I think it was about 2010, give or take, on the on the Wii. And um, it was probably the most mesmerising game <laughs> I've played in years, you know? Mm. Yeah. I've had, you know, going from the, the Commodore 64 that I had to going around my cousin's house and playing Sonic 2 on their Mega Drive, you know, in terms of blowing your mind, that was, that was more mesmerising. <laughs> but just in terms of a holistic every sense in your body involved in what you're doing on the screen this was right up there in terms of an experience you know yeah here's a question for you yeah so these games that are i would say more retro in their aesthetic Mm. do you think that um the more simplistic visuals can often facilitate uh more of an emphasis just on pure gameplay absolutely i think the way they've done it like i said a holistic approach is that you know everything is balanced the graphics mm. don't detract from you too much the music doesn't detract everything gets your attention and therefore you just get immersed completely yeah yeah i've played quite a bit of this one actually after you after I don't know if you did you do a full review of this one i think you did uh, i did yes it was uh, a while ago now but yes i did and uh as i said i'd obviously played it before i'd, I'd owned it twice before on the wii <laughs> and the 3ds but oh, the other man. thing that's great essential really for this type of game is when you die and you will die a lot, trust me. Mm. It's a bloody hard game. <laughs> but when you die, it's, your character whizzes right back to the start and you go mm. off again. And you almost don't have time to get annoyed. Yeah. You know, like if it, if it had said game over, continue, yes or no, yeah. you'd be clicking that no button a lot. But because it just forces you to play again before you've even thought about it, you just go and you try again. Yeah, do you know what? That's a key part. That's a key part of what makes an addictive game. Absolutely. Because some of these, they do that, but the, the restart, like you say, it will take too long. Yeah. And, and it ruins it. Yeah, exactly right. And yeah, if it had just taken five seconds longer, your brain just has enough time to go, oh, sod it, I'm not trying again. But you don't, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that would be you, wouldn't it? That, that, was very, that would very much be me. I should get on a T-shirt, oh, sod it, I'm not trying again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, my next one then is uh, a game called Astroneer. Um, I think if Glenn had to like tick boxes based on what he thinks Mark likes in games it would definitely be space like that would be somewhere up there <laughs> yeah. like anything in space i don't know what it is it just i don't know what it is it just i find it fascinating yeah um so astroneer combines elements of things like minecraft things like no man's sky um so you've got this big sandbox you land on the planet um you kind of start with this hub outpost and uh yeah you remind me glenn of reminded me sorry of the kind of the, one of the fundamental things about it is you've got these like oxygen lines. Do you remember those? Yes, yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, so you've got these oxygen lines that you, you set up nodes and you, you have to kind of supply oxygen to everywhere you go, which in some ways is a bit annoying, you know? Like, you, you can run away from that, but your, your oxygen's running out at quite a steady rate. Mm. But in other ways, it adds to the feeling of isolation. It makes you feel like you are on some distant planet, you know? Yeah, yeah. So... It's very much one of those games where you can set up like autonomous um, productions. You could get like a, a little thing, that, like a little windmill that powers an area, or you can get solar panels. 
Um, and you can build vehicles as well that have an oxygen supply on them, so you're not just stuck in one place. Mm. But as far as being addictive, I, I guess like any, um, like an old school, uh, like a, like a, and I'll, I'll use this because I think I know you might be talking about something similar, but like a roller coaster game or like a theme park game, like where you're building up that area and it becomes autonomous and, and you just keep building it up. There's something compelling about the gradual improvement through your own efforts. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Again, like ones we've talked about in the past, we've talked about Monster Hunter and things like that. They are more, in my opinion, more addictive if you've got a group of you. So this one can do like four player online co-op. Oh, okay, right, yeah. Yeah, and, and to be honest, that's something we should try, like, uh, you know, just two player, but it's it's just more compelling. Because like, then you get to experience multiple play styles. Like for me, you know what I'm like, I'm an absolute wild card. Mm. <laughs> I, I fill up the vehicle and I just disappear into the horizon. But you'd probably be methodically making sure the base was self-sufficient before you left. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And then you'd be like, oh, bloody hell, he's taken all the oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, swapped it for some magic beans or yeah. something. <laughs> and you just hear my laughter as I disappear into a crater and probably die losing all the gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. So, so, yeah, this is uh, the prime example of something that's better with friends. Um, but it's still very, very addictive, and very enjoyable if you're just on your own. Yeah, I think actually we've, so there's been three games so far, of course, on this list. Hmm. Three very different sort of games. You've got the grandiose nature of the Warriors game and that Musu gameplay. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, the very much die and restart straight away uh, nature of the second game, my game. And then you've got that sandbox nature of this one again, which, you know, you just from an exploration viewpoint or as you say, you know, that feeling of uh, of, of what you're you're building yourself and seeing it grow and that satisfaction it, it brings, you know, three, three different uh gameplay styles but you can see the addictive quality in each for me you know yeah definitely and i think that's the beauty of these lists as well yeah i, I would say so i would say so uh, okay my next one then uh, again quite a different experience i would say is a game called shock troopers mm -hmm. have you ever heard of this game i have it wasn't this hang on i'm gonna sound like an idiot so i'm gonna let you tell me <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking okay. of rogue troopers i think no okay so shock troopers um released in the arcades, oh, I'm gonna guess it was mid to late 90s, I would say, around 97, 98. Yeah, you spot on, mate, spot on. Which one was it, 97 or 98? 97, 97, I think. 97, okay. I think the sequel might come out the year later. I think that's what I'm thinking of, but um, I digress. Anyway, so it, it was <laughs> a Neo Geo game. Yeah. And um, it's a run and gun, but it's a top down run and gun. You know, like things like Commando or Ikari Warriors, that sort of uh, mm -hmm. gameplay, uh, which I really enjoy. As much as I love games like Metal Slug, say, for example, um, I love that mm. top-down gameplay. What I love about this one, a few, a few things. Uh, it's very fast and furious, which I, I enjoy. It has, it has a couple of mechanics that just elevate it above a lot of its contemporaries, for me at least. Yeah. First of which being that you can... Obviously, you have your guns and, and you can shoot enemies, that goes without saying, but you can perform a melee attack if they get too close okay but you'll get a, a, a diamond like a crystal for that which gives you much higher score and if you're going for for high scores as obviously a lot of arcade games do that becomes such a crux of what you have to do that you're constantly putting yourself in danger because you've got to get closer to the enemies mm, okay so you can ignore that of course you know you completely ignore that it depends how you want to play it but if you're going for that it just adds such a different shine on what you're doing that i really enjoy that and it also has a roll move. Again, you know, it's nothing revolutionary, of course, but in terms of running guns, mm. um, if you're playing a horizontal one, for example, like Metal Slug, you won't necessarily have that. Whereas on the top-down ones, you, you can, you can roll out the way. And again, it just it just brings such a different dynamic to it that I really I really do enjoy that part of the game. Uh, you can play. I think you've got six. Is it six characters to choose from? I might be wrong there, um, but you can choose to play as three at once. You can bring a team of three each with their own different skills, or you can just choose to play as one character, but you get uh, more lives, I believe it is, for doing so, mm. um, to compensate. And um, it just, again, you know, it, it's such such a polished game that even to this day, however many years that is later, it holds up very well. And I think I've probably played this game through more times than any other game on my Switch. <laughs> and that's because sometimes I'll play it through for fun, you know, mm as many continues as I want and just go for it. Sometimes I'll, uh, you've got on, on the, uh, this is like an arcade archives game, a hamster release. 
in terms of who published it. Yeah. And there's something called caravan mode where you get like five minutes to get as far as you can. And I'll play that and I'll, I'll try and go for those melee kills and get a higher score. There's just so many different ways you can play it for the sake of what six quid that it costs to buy. You know, it's a bit of a bargain as it goes. Let me test your knowledge because you do remember everything, <laughs> which is a bit strange. Okay, go on. What were the names of the two people that had been kidnapped? Oh, do you know what? I, I know <laughs> it's a granddad and he's yes. obviously his yeah. granddaughter. Yeah. Uh, and the girl's name is kind of in my mind, but it's... <laughs> Their surname is Diamond, I'll tell you that much. Oh, I wish that helped more than it did. <laughs> uh, George Diamond and... Don't tell me the girl, wait a minute. Let me see if I can remember the girl. I'm okay. never going to remember the bloke's name. But the girl you rescue at the end and you get the whole, you know, my hero bit. Let me see if I can remember her name. <laughs> begins with C. Uh, it begins, I was just about to say it begins with C. And it's like a, it's a soft C as well. But yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I'll come back to it. I'll come this Okay, on. okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a reason to stick around till the end. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. Well, my final game then. That's right, isn't it? Final game? Yeah. Yep. Final game. My fi final game and one that's just come out and is just brilliant. Um, again, we'll pop a little card up in the corner to our review of it. Um, but it's Neon White. I don't know if you've seen this one or if you caught the review. I think you probably looked at it for your um, roundup video, Glenn. I did, yeah. I watched your review uh, when making the, the school roundup video. Because um, it's funny because I remember when I put it in the upcoming and reading the blurb and thinking, what on earth you missed in this game? It made no sense. It was like a card fighting game, but in first person. But then obviously your review explains it. Yeah. I mean, even playing it, it's one of those most games nowadays. You play and you go, okay, all right, it's a run and gun. Okay, it's a strategy. Okay, it does this. Um, and they very rarely kind of branch from the set path. Yeah. But Neon White is something entirely, it's an entirely new beast. Um, you've got these, essentially this Ben Esposito, who's a bit of a, a, bit of a legend in the uh, game making world, apparently. I mean, I've got to be honest, I hadn't really heard of him. No yeah. offense, Ben. Um, but he created this idea that he was going to, because he used to watch a lot of speedruns online. Okay. And he, was, he wanted to harness the speedrunning um, aspect of gaming, but he wanted to make it so that he almost made every player a speedrunner. Okay, yeah. Um, which which is a difficult a difficult thing to do. Now, I think the way they've done it here is very clever because obviously you've got the cards in the world, which are the guns. And some people didn't like that, you know, you pick up a card and it doesn't turn into a gun. It just, it just is a gun. Like, you, you know, you, you pick up the machine gun card, you can fire machine gun bullets. Um, but his point was that when you discard the card, that's the important part because that's the ability that it gives you. Okay. So, yeah. you know, the machine gun card, you discard it and it does a slam attack, which is for breaking floors and, and quickly moving through a stage. Oh, I see. Um, oh, yeah. Right. And yeah, there's another one that does a double jump and so on and so forth. But each stage has a time limit, essentially, that you have to beat to progress in the main game. Right. Um, and, it, and it's it's demarcated with medals, like a medal, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Mm -hmm. um, but to reach platinum, this and I think this is the this is almost the genius of it. You would think that to you know to get gold and then to get platinum, you just need to get better at the game. But what you've got to do is actually come up with a strategy. So so to you know to reach the very top level, it's not about skill. It's actually about your strategy. So you might look and see a ledge and think, actually, if I discard these two cards together, I can bounce off that wall to reach there, and that's going to save me like 10 seconds. Oh, I'm with you. Um, I understand. Yeah. And and it avoids a lot of frustration there. You know, because... You Sorry, go on. mate. I was just going to say, is it... Um, so does it give you enough cards per stage that you can cycle through and always have a potential solution to a problem? Or is it quite... I mean, it, it can't be linear if... if they want you to think outside the box. How do they manage that card aspect? There's only you can only hold two cards in your hand at any one time. Okay. So every uh, shortcut or every potential opportunity it will always be accessible right. with whatever you've got in your hands. I see. Um, and 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 they limit the type of card you get per stage as well. So yeah, okay. So it's more about you spotting the opportunities rather than not having the cards to perform them. If you know what I mean. Exactly, okay. yeah. It's about spotting them, but it's also about creating them because it's, they've built the game so that there's loads in there that they haven't thought of. Oh, okay, I see. Right. Um, which is, yeah, it's very, very cool. And, and more often than not, you might see something and think, like the first time you run through the stage, you'll think that's impossible. But then the second time, you'll see another platform and think, actually, what if what if I try that? And it, it'll pay off nine times out of ten. Mm. It, sounds, it does sound really interesting. And again, you know, from, from an addictive uh, games 
perspective. Now you've got that speed running aspect, another very addictive quality that a game can throw at you. Yeah, and it's it also has like you said before, when you when you when you know you haven't hit the time, hit one button, straight back to the start. Straight back, yeah, yeah, that's the way to do it. Definitely. So yeah, that's my last one. I think it's probably at the moment my favourite one on this list. Nice, yeah. It looked, I must say, it did look really interesting. I just couldn't quite understand the mechanics. Yeah, no, it sounds good. Oh, and her name was Cecilia, by the way, wasn't it? Yes! Yeah. Did you Google it? Come no, on. No, no, no. It popped up about halfway through, but I didn't want to interrupt you. So I waited until the end to say it. But <laughs> yeah, my mind was uh, thinking away whilst you were talking. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, my last game. My last game, which is, is quite a different one, even for me, to be honest. But it, it definitely has that addictive quality, even if I don't quite know why. Mm. And it's a game called Little Inferno. Okay. Um, which comes from uh, the people behind World of Goo, which is a game I very much enjoyed. I played that one first back on, again, on the Wii, funny enough. Uh, um, Little Inferno came first to the, the Wii U. And uh, it's just a, it's a very strange game. I don't think I could outright recommend this game because some people will play it and be like, this is absolute pants. Like, what are you talking <laughs> about? But it definitely is addictive for me. Mm. And the idea is that you, you basically sit in front of a fireplace yeah. and you have to burn things. <laughs> and it doesn't honestly doesn't get much more involved than that, as ridiculous as that sounds. But what it does do is it um, every time you burn something, it opens something else that you can buy in your in-game catalogue. Okay. And when you finish one catalogue, you've burnt everything basically you can you can order from this catalogue. You can then you get a new catalogue and there's new stuff in there. And you can you can combine items and burn them to get a bonus. So, for example, you get like little cryptic clues. One of them will say like uh, the the night out bonus mm -hmm. or or the movie night bonus. Sorry, that's what it is. And you have to burn a TV <laughs> and uh, a call on the cob to create. As it, obviously, when it burns, it creates popcorn. Oh, nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very interesting, but it, there's no real consequence. Like I was thinking that if my my flame went out, I was going to get game over mm. or something. But you you don't. You just play. Like you just play. Yeah. But I keep playing. Like, I can't stop. You know, I'm thinking there must be more to it than this, but there isn't. No. It doesn't stop me from playing. Do you know what I mean? I do. I don't think you're alone either. Just while, you're, as I always do, while you're talking, I'm looking at other reviews and looking at bits and bobs. Right. And it's massively critically acclaimed. Some people call it a masterpiece, which is interesting. Really? Yeah. It's, it's actually 66% wow. off as well at the moment. I might try it out. Oh, okay. well, there you go. I, did, I didn't even know it was on sale. Like, like I said, <laughs> I don't know if I could wholeheartedly recommend it because it's... It's very niche it's very niche but i have been very compelled to play it and to carry on it is very clever don't get me wrong like the way that the uh, the items that you burn will combine at times and the effects that has on the flame it is very clever mm. i do feel that maybe it should have had a second mode that had some sort of consequence or some sort of high score something but yeah yeah that's by the by i'm still i'm still playing it so it's, it's obviously not affected <laughs> me that much is it um, like a relaxing game? Is it? Sorry to interrupt. Is it relaxing? Like, what's the? I mean, it, yeah, I guess I suppose it is because it's there's no consequence, so it can't mm. not be. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, I suppose it is quite cathartic to see the flames, and um, in a similar vein to people that play games like Grand Theft Auto, I guess, yeah. and um, you know, just cause absolute mayhem, <laughs> but wouldn't dream about nicking a car in real life. Yeah, but, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, you know that burning things. You know, I, I, would, I would certainly wouldn't burn my TV, but seeing one burn on a on a. <laughs> A screen is is strangely <laughs> um endearing for some odd reason, you know? Yeah. Nice. So yeah, that's my last game. A very, very strange one, but uh yeah, definitely quite addictive in its own way. Very cool. Alright, well that is essentially the end. We thought it's it seems to work nicer when we you don't do ten for the sake of doing ten, you cut it down to maybe a six and it's just you can put more detail into each one, you know? especially in this format when we're, we're just chatting because it gives you time to talk about each other's games without uh, the video becoming obscenely long, you know? Exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, I just want to say very quickly, I've just noticed quite foolishly that I forgot to pause the washing machine before I started recording. So <laughs> <laughs> if you can hear a washing machine in the background, I do apologise. Um, <laughs> but aside from that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, do let us know any games that you find addictive in the in the comments section. It's always always interesting for, to read for us, but obviously for other people to to find a few gems that they might not have heard of. Exactly right. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and to our patrons. You guys support us each and every month. I will sort out the membership stuff. I know I said in sales video that it's almost done, but these things take time. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.